Earning a lot of money doesn't actually translate into building millions of dollars in net worth. In fact, many individuals making six plus figures a year are shepherded into a lifestyle where they don't have to make financial decisions. This unfortunately means that these individuals fall deeper and deeper into the hole of making paycheck to paycheck decisions, even though those paychecks are pretty large. But there's a way out. I'm gonna talk about six mistakes that you might be making as a high income earner and how you can reverse every one of them so that you can build real financial security and abundance and live the wealthy lifestyle that you probably thought you were gonna live with that six figure salary. Okay, the first mistake here is feeling the need to look like other high income earners. Our ego tricks us into thinking that we actually need to look like the people around us in order to fit in. This is true no matter what stage of the wealth building process you're in. But why is this a problem? I know that I look at the adventure vans around my little mountain town and think, I want an adventure van too, stocked with the latest mountain bikes and skis and all of the fancy equipment needed to play out here in the mountains. And your version of luxury might be different. It may involve designer handbags or really fancy cars. The problem here is the hedonic treadmill. You get into the habit of buying another thing to satisfy an external pressure. And there is always something more to buy to fit in. That's the treadmill. Especially when you're comparing yourself to other individuals who have a lot of cash to buy big fancy things. To counter this, you need to know yourself at a deeper level so that you're not inclined to follow the herd here. Do you really want those big fancy cars that come with payments that might max you out in your month to month despite those month to month earnings being really high. Do you, can you satisfy that craving in a different way? Can you rent a fancy car on your next vacation, for instance? This also comes from acknowledging that your true wealth, building the kind of wealth that you can live off of forever and not need a paycheck one day, doesn't come with how you look or what you own. It comes with investing money. This isn't easy, right? We're talking about identity here and shifting it can be actually pretty tricky, but you can get started on this today. Start by reflecting on experiences that don't require fancy toys or even anything to do. Go for a walk, uh, meet a friend out at a park instead of grabbing a fancy dinner with them or appetizers and drinks out. See if you can substitute an experience for a thing. Before we go into the next one, I want you to remember that money is not a one size fit all strategy here. Your version of luxury is totally different from my version of luxury and our goals are very different from each other. These are mistakes that most of us make, especially when we get into the higher income status. You have to be the one that fits your money behaviors to your dream money lifestyle. I just want you to think about what is that dream money lifestyle and if your paycheck stops, is it still gonna continue to support it? Okay, mistake number two is using the wrong status symbols. I'm talking beyond just looking at the other people around you and sort of labeling certain elements of their appearance as their status. I'm talking about this underlying thing that our society does where we label liabilities as our status instead of assets as our status symbols. Liabilities like that fancy car, the boats, the RVs, even the home payments, right? These all can come with debt and are all depreciating assets. This is detrimental to your financial health because you're putting value on things that are not good for your long-term financial wealth building strategies. Instead, I want you to start to think about shifting your own perception of the value of an asset and start to get excited about it. Now, this isn't as sexy as a fancy car. You might have rental houses or be involved in real estate syndications where there are apartment buildings in different cities of the country that you're investing in, or even in stocks, right? Those are a huge number of companies that you can't look or see or touch, right? But if you start to talk about these with your other friends and value them like they are status symbols, then you're gonna start to shift yourself wanting more of those than wanting those liabilities. We're tricking our brains here. And remember that assets can actually be fun. Investing can actually be fun. I never thought I would say this. I really wanted all those toys, the mountain bikes and the skis, and don't get me wrong, I have a little bit of that. But now I get really excited when I deploy money into a new apartment building in Orlando, Florida, or a hotel complex out in Radcliffe, Kentucky. 
it can be really fun and I actually like sharing this with my friends because it's a little bit of like, what? What are you doing? That sounds crazy. How much fun is that? You're gonna make great returns and you're getting that conversation going. The third mistake here is not valuing our personal time. We often equate working hard with bettering ourselves and our families. The harder you work, the better the payoff, right? I know I thought this for many, many years and it probably caused many, many burnouts. I think I subconsciously thought that not working really hard or taking more time to rest or just do something that I enjoyed with my personal time was partially lazy or I wasn't working towards these big financial goals that I knew I needed to get to lift myself out of financial insecurity and into financial abundance. But this mindset of not valuing my personal time, not valuing taking the time to rest and relax and take care of myself meant that I actually wasn't working towards increasing that personal time which is the true freedom here, being able to have money come in without you working for it. So what we can do here is simply acknowledge when we are spending personal time and acknowledge that I wanna work towards increasing this amount of personal time. Personal time might be time that you can spend on a side hustle, a business, with your family, going on vacations, whatever it is you wanna do, but I want you to think about purchasing assets like in our first mistake or the remedy to our, our second mistake, excuse me, so that you are starting to have the passive income, the, ne the net worth to support you taking more time for yourself. When you value your time now, you're going to work towards getting more of it. Okay, mistake number four is that we accept student debt as a given. This is a chronic problem across America, especially for high income earners, because you're likely in the professions that required a lot of education and likely the corresponding amounts of high student debt. In fact, when I look at the statistics here, if you're in a medical degree or you received a medical degree, you're in that field, you might be looking at $200,000 to $300,000 in debt. That's an average across the country for medical school graduates and dental school graduates. Law school, they're at around an average of $132,000 of debt. Pharmacy, $167,000 of debt. Even like an MBA or your general graduate school group, that's me, has about fifty to $70,000 in debt. And then to top the list, those poor orthodontists out there, they're looking at an average of $560,000 in student loan debt. That's half a million dollars. So the mistake that we're making here is that we're accepting that this is just like a lifelong payment that you might be making. You're making it for the next 20 or 30 years. What you can do instead is try to aggressively pay it down because that's gonna free up a lot of capital that you can put into those assets so that you can buy back your time. It's this just idea that this is just part of the process, this is just how it works, but there's ways to aggressively pay it off quicker. And if you're a six-figure salary earner, you're gonna wanna try to do that sooner so that you can leverage that high income to get back your freedom. Okay, mistake number five is falling for financial institution traps. High income earners are prime targets for banks, insurance groups, or investment firms who need to make that high commission based on what they're selling you or what they're helping you to invest. These are the high fees, these are the bogus insurance products, and they're targeting people like you who have the money to put in these places. So why is this risky? You certainly need some of these products. You need insurance, you need to be investing. But the risk here is that you're susceptible to the individuals who have higher fees. They're making higher commissions based on how much they get you to spend or invest in their products. And these products are often not in your best interest. Instead, you should seek out fee-only advice. This means you're gonna pay a one-time fee for that financial advising service or other type of service. Look into the insurance products that you're purchasing. What are the fees associated with those? Also keep in mind that having a community of people around you who are also interested in investing and building their wealth sustainably, not living paycheck to ultra wealthy paycheck, are gonna help you vet different types of resources. They're gonna give you that peace of mind when you go into a new investment. If you try out real estate syndications, for example, talk to other investors who are doing the same thing. Talk to them about the sponsors or the operators that they're working with to be able to deploy their capital. This way you're gonna be able to vet those resources against each other. Okay, mistake number six, and this is probably the toughest one, is not saying goodbye to your high spending lifestyle. High income earners often find it really hard to unwind from the lavish high spending lifestyle that you've grown yourself accustomed to. 
And I'm not saying that you have to give up the wonderful luxuries in your life, but I am saying that you need to start to question whether they're valuable, whether having those leased cars in your driveway, having the big fancy house with a ton of square footage is worth it now for you to not have the kind of wealth later where you can choose to stop working, right? This is the direct payoff. But it can be hard to start to unwind that, to start to sell your cars, buy a car fully paid off, downsize your home. But it's worth it to start it little bit by little bit. The emotional attachment we have to things is real here. So don't downplay that this is a hard process of saying go or letting go of these things. To start, focus on how you want to feel rather than finding things that make you feel a certain way. Try to find a way to feel that way without buying or needing to buy a big expensive thing. So if you wanna drive really fast or have a beautiful car, look at purchasing a nice car and renting a fast one on your holiday. Remember, you can always go back. You can always go back and buy those cars again if it turns out that you're just totally depressed in this non-lavish lifestyle that you've created for yourself. But give yourself the opportunity to experience that where you don't have high spending. Another thing to check out is the video I created about how to save $10,000. Now, this may not seem like it's applicable to you, but maybe even as a high income earner, you find it hard to squirrel away money for investments. But in this video, I go into a lot of the psychological tactics that you need to be able to get yourself to make these financial decisions. But knowing these mistakes, that you may be making on your path to building the real kind of wealth you want are not going to actually help you live that wealthy lifestyle. In fact, you may take years to shift your lifestyle and not make any progress towards those big wealth goals. That's why I created this wealth projection video that shows you the power of starting to invest now for just five years and the impact that that will have on your entire net worth down the road. So watch that video next.